Good morning and welcome to the 33rd Annual Partners in Education Students Award Breakfast. First and foremost, a big thank you to all the Partners in Education members and supporters for all that you do for our schools and our students. Your support and participation is what makes a student award breakfast of this magnitude possible. And speaking of a breakfast of this magnitude, I want to give a big thank you to Kathleen Cochran, the general manager of the Bacara. <laughs> Kathleen, for a third year, has hosted us at a very minimal cost. And we could all know this is a perfect venue for appropriately honoring our student award recipients and their families. So thank you again, uh, Kathleen. And also, I'm pleased to uh, announce and thank TV Santa Barbara for being with us today. Uh, TV Santa Barbara will be broadcasting uh, this morning's event, another first. Uh, <clears throat> Also, uh, it's a uh, pleasure on behalf of uh, all of you, and you'll be, uh, uh, she'll be greeting you and uh, talking with you later, but to officially welcome back Michelle Magnuson from her maternity leave. <laughs> and uh, thank Chelsea Duffy for her leadership during uh, Michelle's absence. So. I think it's clear to all of us that Michelle and uh, Chelsea make a dynamic duo, duo and really uh, keep us humming all year long. So today we're going to be focusing primarily on the intern program, but the bottom line for all partners in education programs, whether it's the intern program, the volunteer program, Computers for Families, or any other partners project, has always been to successfully harness the skills, the energy, the resources, and the creativity of our business and philanthropic partners and supporters, building strong partnerships that support student success. The more than 400 guests gathered here today are a wonderful tribute and testimony to the enlightened business and philanthropic community we have in Santa Barbara County that understands so well how an investment in education today pays dividends for students and indeed the entire community for years to come. So thank you all for caring, for participating, for being here, and for making this morning possible. And a special word to the students here this morning. I want to emphasize that today is really about you. On behalf of everyone in the room, congratulations on your well-deserved honors. We are here to honor you, and we, and we uh, applaud you as well. We look forward to continuing to support you in the days ahead as you move on to the next level. Also, to the parents in the room, you have every reason to be very proud of your child's work as well as your own work as a parent. You have supported your sons and daughters as they pursue their passions. You are raising our future leaders. You share in their success. Thank you for encouraging your children to pursue their dreams and their goals. And we also give the deep appreciation and thanks to all of the teachers here for the commitment, for the passion, for the skill that you bring to your classrooms and all that you do to help our students succeed. Simply put, we recognize and appreciate you as true community heroes. With all that said, it's now my pleasure to introduce the outgoing board chair, Steve Ainsley. Steve, please join me. <laughs> Steve has been a longtime champion of uh, partners' work going way back to his days as a publisher of the news press. In fact, for those that may not realize, Steve was one of the co-founders of the Signature's Partner in Education Computers for Families program. 
And uh, to me, Steve brings to the task, he's a, uh, he's a model, if you will, of the innovation, the commitment, and the can-do attitude that so many of our business partners bring to the table at Partners. Steve, on behalf of the board, on behalf of all of Partners in Education, on behalf of all of the students and their uh, parents and teachers, indeed on behalf of the entire Santa Barbara County community, please accept this small gift as a token of our appreciation for your leadership and for Thank your you skill. Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Bill, for those kind remarks. The, um, the board similarly rejoiced when I told them that that was my last meeting last month. So <laughs> a little bit of wailing and sobbing would have been uh, appreciated. But uh, I have a, a couple of jobs here this morning before I have some brief remarks. Uh, the first is both good news and bad news, and that is to recognize uh, our 30 President's Councils. The good news is that we have 30 President's Councils members and we couldn't do the work that we do without them. The bad news is that there are indeed 30 of them. <laughs> so uh, if you would, uh, and some of you have heard me do this drill before, um, I'm gonna, I'd like to name every, every member that we have along with who's representing that President's Council member today. Please hold your applause until I mentioned the 30th. Now there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is saving time. The other is typically what happens is there's wild applause for the first one. When I get down to number 30, it's very tepid. <laughs> and, and it really bums them out. So, <laughs> so let's see, now hold your applause as much as you would like to. So we'll start uh, with Antioch University and representing them is Patricia Chavez Nunez. AT&T, Rich Roach, ATK Space Systems, Dave Mesner, Citrix, Heather Lahr, Community West Bank, Michael Flom and Sean McCullough, Cottage Health System, Ron Werft, Cox Communication, Carrie Harrison and Sarah James, DD Ford Construction, Doug Ford, Exxon Mobil, Troy Trancata, Field and Graduate Institute, Dr. Katrina Rogers, Frank Skipper Construction, Paul Wykowski and Frank Skipper. The key class, John Daly. Marburg Industries, Derek Carlson. McGowan Gunterman, Steve Smith. Montecito Bank and Trust, Judy Guillermo Newton. Newshawk, Bill McFadden. Pacific Coast Business Times, Jared Godinez. Pacific Western Bank, Linda Nara. Parentclick.com, Rachel Steidel. Plan Member Financial Services, our newest member, Terry Janeway. QAD, Bill Keese. Rabobank, Kurt Crutherds. Raytheon, Ed Ware. Santa Barbara Teachers Federal Credit Union, Ray McLaughlin. Union Bank, Randy Weiss. Veneco, Mary Beth Cardi. And Westmont, Dr. Reed Sherd. Now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, one of our board members who, uh, although staying on the board, is stepping off uh, the executive committee after a 15 plus after 15 plus years on the executive committee. Uh, he's a past president uh, and most notably spearheaded the Computers for Family endowment campaign, which ensured that Computers for Family would uh, exist in perpetuity. It was a $4 million campaign, and he, along with Bill Cerrone, who you just heard from, and Peter McDougall, headed up that campaign several years ago. Uh, so I'd like to all recognize uh, Joe Hal. Joe, please stand. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe, they're just as delighted as they were with me leaving that you're leaving the executive committee. Okay, um, I'd also like to recognize our board members. Uh, there's quite a few of them that are in attendance today. I won't, rec I won't say your names, but if you all would please stand up and be recognized by the group. Please stand up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so all of us love talking about what a special place Santa Barbara is. 
but more often than not, when we do so, we refer to climate or location or generally the sense of place that we have. Too often we give short shrift to examples that point to what, in my view, truly makes this a special locale. Uh, here's just one for you that's very close to home. Twice a year, Partners holds morning breakfast beginning at what is admittedly an ungodly hour, and over 500 people regularly attend for no reason other than to support public education. Yes, we appreciate what we have, but I think there is a sense amongst most of us who call this home that we are community curators. Every community believes itself unique. Few are, and we're one of them because of this dedicated community engagement. The Latin derivation of curator is to care for, and while it typically refers to the head of a museum or a cultural institution, I do not think it's a stretch to suggest the willingness of people such as yourselves to invest time and resource in our schools is part of a larger ideal of caring about a special place. I applaud you for that. We need more curators, but thanks to those of you who have so easily assumed the role, thanks to all those of you who have so easily assumed that role. <laughs> Partners has had another successful year. Our internship program, the focus of today's event, had record participation. The number of volunteers in our schools, coordinated by partners, grew exponentially this past year. And Computers for Family had the largest distribution of computers, uh, just over 600 in recent memory. In ways large and small, these successes simply would not happen without the participation of most of you in this room. So again, I thank you. This morning is a recognition event for those students who have been nominated either by a teacher or a partner staffer for their efforts directed toward career exploration post high school. They put a lot of work into this, uh, and frankly, it's an extraordinarily impressive accomplishment. They work outside of school hours, they have to be accepted by the companies, they learn a lot, and uh, frankly, I applaud each and every one of you for that. Of course, every student crossing this stage this morning will likely tell you they did not do it alone. As much as this is specifically an opportunity to salute student accomplishment, and it is, it should not be lost on any of us that parents, educators, volunteers, businesses, and not-for-profits have all played a significant hand in their success. Our students' successes are our successes. However, the corollary is also true. When our students struggle, it is our collective responsibility to redouble our efforts. It's a weighty one. But your attendance here this morning argues you both know it and accept it. For that and for all you've done for education in this community, I thank you. Finally, uh, as I walk off the stage, I would like to recognize my successor uh, for, at, as uh, chair of the Partners Board for next year, Dr. Lori Gaskin, president of Santa Barbara City College. Lori. Um, and so in a few minutes, we'll recognize our next generation of curators, I hope. Um, they're an impressive group, but first let me welcome Partners in Education Executive Director Michelle Magnuson. Michelle. You didn't bring up your prop. I didn't. <laughs> I left my prop at home. So as many of you know, my husband and I recently welcomed our first baby. Uh, you saw him out in the hallway. Baby Seth is two months old, and I've nominated him to be the new partner's mascot. <laughs> this is the best venue ever for a new mom. I can like brag all at once. <laughs> So many of you don't know that uh, we waited seven long years for baby Seth to join our family. And I've often wondered why it took uh, so many years for him to, to join us. And I've had some recent late nights to consider that span of time. And <laughs> uh, seven years ago, my husband and I had just moved back to Santa Barbara and I'd given up a teaching job in another state that I loved. And I found a position that was at a great place but it wasn't the right position for me. And as I was filing grant ideas, I was reading them, desperately wanting to be out there doing something different, and I read one from Partners in Education, and it was an idea to use more career uh, experts in the classroom. And I thought as I, you know, A, B, because I have to count the alphabet every time I file, um, I thought I could do that. And I, I could take that idea and I could, I could make it work. And I became 
uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically brave. I found someone that knew someone that knew our former executive director, Ben Romo, and I asked for a meeting with him, even though I was utterly terrified. At the end of the meeting, he said to me, well, one day I might actually have money to pay you, but if you want to quit your job and try it out, I'll put you on a contract, no guarantees. I went home, I told my husband that I wanted to quit my job and lose our health insurance. <laughs> At that time, he had just enrolled in seven years of graduate school, and I was terrified that I was making the wrong choice. But do you know what? It worked. Um, I quit my job, we lost our health insurance, I worked on that program until it eventually we got a grant for an actual salary and real benefits, and now that program serves nearly the entire county and has 13 employees or uh, AmeriCorps members working to make it happen. Out of that program grew our internship program, which we celebrate today. Some of you in this room are inherently risk takers. You're already thinking about um, being your own boss and your next big idea, and others of you are more like me, who have big ideas, but who are more cautious. But I know when the right opportunity comes that you will take it and you will make something great. I'm proud to be a, a part of Partners in Education. I'm honored to be a piece of that puzzle that makes up our three great programs. You've heard a little bit about them so far. Computers for Families, seeking to bridge the digital divide. We've provided over 10,000 computers to families locally. Companies and individuals donate their old hardware and students learn and serve by refurbishing those computers and then taking them out and training families. Our volunteer program serves as a hub for volunteer engagement in schools. It's a one-stop shop for educators to request assistance, and it's the easiest way that community members can find the perfect way to get involved in schools. And what that has meant is 30,000 hours of volunteer service in our schools every year. We're building the capacity of schools and youth-serving nonprofits and the amazing programs that serve students beginning as early as preschool and bridging them into their post-high school plans. The internship program grew out of a desire to provide more work experience opportunities to students. Our interns celebrated here today know that it's a difficult process. It's a rigorous application, seven weeks of training, and then 80 hours at their host site in their career field of interest. With businesses paying half of the student wage, we're able to connect more students with career mentors each year. I spend a lot of time each day thinking about our partner's tagline. You can see it there, preparing for students for what's next. And for my little student right now, um, it's progressing from his first real smiles to making sounds, like intentional sounds. Uh, he spends a lot of time every day recognizing his own arms for the first time. Um, but for most of you in the room, what's next is your senior year of high school, where you're making lots of decisions about your future. And for some of you, you have days until your next adventure begins. You may have plans for college. Perhaps you have a new job or an internship. You may even be considering service in AmeriCorps or the Peace Corps or military service. You might be unsure of what's next and exploring. And what I want you to know is that everyone in this room is behind you. Take the big steps. Try new things. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And when you have an opportunity, tell yourself, I can do that, and then follow through. I think one of the most Im important lessons that we learn as adults is how to be both independent and interdependent. We do this in our personal lives, but also in the workplace. We have to be independent enough to complete projects and meet deadlines, show up on time, and know our trade. At the same time, we have to be interdependent, trusting team members, listening to feedback, serving clients, and working for the good of our whole business or organization. As I hold my son in my arms, I am full of hopes and dreams for him. I want him to be happy. I want him to be safe. I want him to be able to support a family of his own. I want him to be proud of the work that he does, and I want him to make the world a better place. Students, your parents have these same dreams for you, even though you're too big to hold now. <laughs> Once I start thinking about all of those dreams, I panic. I realize that I need a whole network of people in my community ready to step in where I am weak. Career education in particular has taken on a new value to me. There's no way that I can prepare myself to be an expert in every field that baby Seth might one day grow up to want to be. I have to trust you. 
um, well, you in 15 years, I have to trust you, um, to help him explore his interests, his aptitudes, his passions, and his preferences. You, the student award winners today, will be the ones to let him tour your office, uh, to practice interviewing him, to allow you to ask him eight zillion questions about your job, and to try out an internship. And as his mother, I ask you, please be nice to him. I've always said that we couldn't do it without you to our business partners, and I've always meant it, but now I really get it, I really understand. We have people who have the ideas and meet in committees to make them a reality. Our career education committee in particular is made up of counselors, administrators, and business leaders. This year they worked on developing better templates for mock job interviews. They designed curricula for helping students develop resumes that were implemented in schools across the region. We have those individuals who commit to working one-on-one -on -one with students as guest speakers, mock job interviewers, resume coaches, job shadow hosts, career mentors, career day speakers, and of course by offering internships and jobs to students. Give me, give everyone a wave if you were involved in any career development activity this year. Yeah, see, students, those are the people you can go ask for help. We are so lucky to have you. If we multiplied all of the people in this beautiful ballroom, thank you, Bakara, if we multiplied all of you by four, we'd have the total number of people who volunteered this year, and it's not over yet. Of course, we also have phenomenal educators in the classroom, teaching academies, and ROP courses. You'll see the work of talented Dos Pueblos video production students today, led by teacher John Dent. Another awesome example of real-world skills and service in action is Santa Barbara High's ROP Don's Net Cafe. One of their many services is the VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So low-income in individuals can go to the high school, the first high school in the nation to be certified as a filing, with a filing identification number, and they will have their taxes completed by students who are certified. The tax returns will be completed for free. This program has now been replicated across the nation and is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Opportunities where students learn skills and then are able to apply them in positions of service to others are the most memorable. As you see students cross the stage today honored for their learning and service, please honor the work of our educators by considering the big questions. What can I do to sustain the existing career education opportunities, and how can I help develop new ones? Parents and family members, of course, are the cheerleaders for our students. Please stand. Por favor, levántese si está un padre. If you are a parent of one of our awardees today, let's give them a big round of applause. They did a lot of this work. Stand up. Oh, they're shy. Thank you. And students, you have to give them a hug after the ceremony is over. The rest of us are exempt. And of course, we have the students, and we'll be seeing lots of them right after me. The point is, we each have a place. If any one of us can't make the time to play his or her role, there's a gap in the pathway that we're laying for our students to succeed. Partners is part of a larger community effort called Thrive to establish a pathway for every child within our community. Educators, nonprofit staff, philanthropists, parents, and business leaders are uniting around the idea that we need to work together and take responsibility for helping every child navigate from cradle to career. We have very simple goals. Every child enters school ready to learn as measured by kindergarten readiness. Children succeed in school, including reading and mathematics proficiency. Every student pursues education towards a career after high school. This means every child is eligible to attend a university if he or she chooses to. It also means that as a community, we commit to measuring the percentage of students entering post-secondary education, whether that be college, university, a training program, an apprenticeship, or a certificate program after high school. And here's the hard part. We also want them to finish that additional training and enter a career. We want each student to be able to feel pride in a job well done while having the financial and emotional skills to remain in our community as productive, contributing society. We've talked about and participated in career education pathways at Partners for years. They have made a big impact. Can you imagine how many more students would leave our schools 
ready to be truly successful in all of those areas that I dream about for my baby if everyone joined together with the same goal to help students take steps along this pathway. Thank you to the students who have worked hard to live up to their parents' dreams. Thank you to the parents who have trusted educators, both in the classroom and mentors in the workplace, with their children. And thank you to the many educators and business partners here today and also out at work who have taken that trust and grown it into something truly amazing. I also owe a personal big thank you to Chelsea Duffy, who has graciously and capably done both my job and hers for these past few months. She's the master architect behind today's event and so many of the elements that make our program strong. To me, what makes, Chelsea <laughs> what makes Chelsea a leader is how much she invests of herself in each aspect of our organization and every person that's a part of it. Students, practice your award-winning smiles and waves as Chelsea will now begin the awards. Well, I will say that I really missed Michelle when she was gone. I definitely learned that uh, skill of independence. But uh, one of the good things about her being on maternity leave was that if I was stressing out about something at work at 3 a.m., I knew she'd be awake, and so I could text her, and she would respond. And it did work on a couple of occasions. Students, that is not normal employee behavior, though. Do not text your boss at 3 a.m. <laughs> I think what I love most about this event is that it is a culmination of so much hard work and collaboration on behalf of students, teachers, businesses, and of course our program staff, which the team today really came through and has done an amazing job. To illustrate how Partners in Education internships are closely aligned with classroom learning, we are pleased to be sharing with you two video presentations produced by the ROP TV and video production class at Dos Pueblos High School. These videos feature two students, one from San Marcos and the other from Santa Barbara High School. I often had to remind myself that the two women I was working with on this video were only in high school. What, you have homework today? Because they were so incredibly professional. Carmina Asibu and Linda Chavez, you are incredible to work with. You are gonna go so far in your futures. Thank you so much. Carmina, will you please stand? You're here with us today. Thank you so much for your hard work making these videos special for everyone involved. So without further delay, let's see your work in action. My name is Leanne Nodal, also commonly known as Mrs. B. I'm a teacher at San Barbara High School, ROP, CTE, and I teach computer occupations. When I first met Henry, I could tell right away he was ambitious. He was very shy, but he was ambitious. He knew that he wanted to be a successful person. He had that gleam in his eye. I started in Miss B's class my sophomore year in computer accounting, also an ROP class. And just like Miss B said, it was kind of hard for me in the beginning. But when I started seeing all the uh, knowledge I could gain in that one class, really um, empowered me. It's so amazing when I have a student who's interned and I will call on them a lot and I will say, so you really need to know how to learn this if you get a job at the bank. Right, Henry? And right, Mrs. B. Thanks to Miss B and being in the Dance Night Cafe, she offered the chance of being an intern. And I'll admit, the whole process of getting into it was intimidating, having to put in a resume, a cover letter, getting interviewed for it. I really thought I wasn't going to get a chance to be in the program. But I set my mind to it, and I got it. The training basically summarized steps of getting a job knowing what to do when you get the job. How should your etiquette be? How to look, how to dress? My name is Rakesh Prajabadi. I'm the branch manager of Pacific Western Bank at the Kalida office. We're part of the community, and being part of the community means we need to support our local schools and help the students uh, to succeed. Partners in Education made it very easy for us to be part of the internship program. When I went to go interview for my possible internship, which was still not official yet. I had to go interview it just like any other kind of internship. I went in reviewing all the stuff I had learned. I came in ambitious and ready to start interning and showing what I've learned. When we first did the interview with Henry, it was probably one of the best interviews I've ever had. And I asked him, how were you able to do this so effortlessly? 
and he brought out that the partners in education was the key to helping him. Henry was excellent. I remember the first day when he got there, he was prompt, he was uh, professionally dressed. Most importantly, he was eager to learn. I'll never forget the time when I started my first day there and the manager there told me that I had my own desk to myself. It might sound kind of funny, but it's actually, I felt kind of big for me. His mother came in the second to last day and she wanted to take a picture of him at the new accounts desk. And that was just really leaving a lasting impression because you could see the pride in his mother's face as she took that picture of him. Henry did quite a number of tasks. We had him help us process transactions at the teller station. In addition, we also trained him to help prepare documentation for new accounts and to be able to do not only take the math that he already has learned in school, but to apply it. I have seen such amazing changes in Henry. Number one, he is not shy. He is able to speak confidently. He's a class leader. Other students know that Henry is now a boss, and they call him that. After doing my internship, now I'm, I'm looking to start my career in banking. They offered me a job at the place I'm interning at Pacific Western Bank. So I think I could really go high in that one place where I'm at. And it can just goes to show if you really put your mind to something, you can achieve many things. And now I am very excited to introduce to you someone who has a very special place in my heart. Some of you might remember when Erica Terrazas spoke at this same event three years ago, getting an award herself as a representative of the internship program. She was part of one of the very first sessions of the program when I first started working here. Over the years, we've stayed in touch, and I've watched her grow up into a kind, smart, poised, and confident young woman. I am so proud to now be able to call her a friend. To introduce the awards category of business and finance, Erica Terrazas. Seeing that video had, um, featuring Henry is exciting to me because it wasn't long ago that I was in the same exact spot as he was. My name's Erika Terrazas and I graduated from Santa Barbara High School three years ago. Being part of the Regional Occupational Program in Ms. B's class made it, made it possible for me to gain skills that would be needed for a future career. And just like Henry, it, motiva it motivated me to apply for a Partners in Education Internship Program. These experiences, both the classroom and the workplace, define my high school career and set the stage for the rest of my life. When I last spoke to this crowd, I was, in, I was a high school senior who had just completed her internship with Community West Bank. This was thanks to Linda Nara, who is here today, and who at the time was the bank's president. Funny enough, she is now the president of Pacific Western Bank, where Henry interned. It's thanks to people like her that this program has grown as much as it has since I was in it. Working at Community West Bank was a great experience that I will take with me for the rest of my life. My first day of work, I was really nervous, just like every other intern. When I went into the bank, I thought I was just gonna shadow my supervisor, Celia, but instead, she gave me my desk and she gave me a couple of tasks to do. It was intimidating at first, but I learned so much. These experiences made me brave enough to study abroad in Italy this past year and made me qualified to get a job in the fiscal department at Santa Barbara County Education Office, where I work now. My most recent accomplishment was getting into Cal State University Los Angeles after spending the past couple years at Santa Barbara City College. I am also proud to say that my younger brother is following my footsteps. He saw me complete the internship program and even get hired at Community West Bank for a longer period once the internship ended. He wanted that too. Last year, he received an award at this event for completed, completing an internship in business with Doug Ford at DD, DDD Construction. He, he's still working there today. It must run in our family. Our parents didn't go to college, but they have always supported our career goals and always encouraged us to pursue some type of higher education. In addition, We've been lucky to have teachers and career mentors always pushing us to explore and find out where we fit in the professional arena. 
we were never told that there's just one way to succeed. And so we had the freedom to find success in our own ways. I think the most important thing I learned from my experience in this program is that no matter where you come from, you can succeed. I am so excited for all the student awardees in this room today. Take it from me, the experiences and skills you've gained from your classes and internships are going to help you in the long run. Congratulations on all your hard work. I know I'm not as experienced or as accomplished as some of the presenters coming after me today, but who knows? Maybe one day I will be the president of a bank. And when I am, I will be sure to mentor young people the way I was mentored. I will be sure to always say to, yes to Chelsea when she asked me to hire a partners in education intern. Thank you, Chelsea, for all the support. I look up to you, and you're a great role model. And now the awardees for business and finance. Nisa Aguilar, Rincon High School, Curious Cup. Henry Almengor, Santa Barbara High School, Pacific Western Bank. Hector Avila. Noel Ballou, Dos Pueblos High School, Virtual Enterprise. Cassidy Blaine, Dos Pueblos High School, Underground Hair Salon. Alejandro Camacho, Santa Barbara High School, Keller Williams. Esperanza Carmona, Dos Pueblos High School, Work Experience Education. Sierra Castro, Santa Barbara High School, Hair Select. Connor Clancy, Santa Barbara High School, ROP Computer Accounting. Kyle Dannenfelser, San Marcos High School, ROP Virtual Enterprise. Iris Estrada, Santa Barbara High School, Toma Restaurant. Maria Gonzalez, San Marcos High School, ROP Computer Business Applications. Maria Hernandez, Santa Barbara High School, Design Studio MZ. Jasmine Lepe, Dos Pueblos High School, Workability Program. Amazing Grace Llanos, San, Santa Barbara High School, Community West Bank. Andrea Mondragon, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Computer Accounting, ROP Virtual Enterprise. Shirley Prasad, San Marcos High School, ROP Virtual Enterprise. Jesus David Terrazas, Donsnet Cafe. Rebecca Ruiz, Santa Barbara High School, Woman in Tax. Andrew Teig, Santa Barbara High School, Curious Cup. Beatriz Valenzuela, Mission Community Based Program, Workability Program. Leticia Zuniga, Santa Barbara High School, ROP Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, Vida Community West Bank. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ron Werft, and I have the privilege of working as the president and CEO of Cottage Health System. And uh, it's indeed an honor this morning to introduce the next awards category for all of our healthcare and science uh, students this morning. Um, first of all, congratulations to all of the honorees uh, here today. Uh, I would say that the entire community is just so very proud of you. Um, uh, and because of the steps that you're taking, both in the classroom and, and all that you're doing outside the classroom to prepare yourselves for careers and apply your talents, it, it just gives us all confidence that we are in really good hands. The future's in very good hands. And I think for those of you who are pursuing careers in healthcare, um, we being knowing that we're in really good hands is really important because we're actually going to literally be in your hands when we're in beds and you're taking care of us uh, in the future. Um, what, one of the really important messages this morning that you're hearing, I think, from all the speakers is to discover your passion and follow your dreams. And, and, and this is really possible, I think, particularly uh, here in Santa Barbara. Um, I feel so lucky and privileged myself because I get to see this played out at Cottage um, in, in our hospitals every single day. Um, we have uh, over 3,500 employees at Cottage. There are 700 physicians on the medical staff. And every one of these individuals are people who followed and found their passion and their dreams and then you know, applied themselves to make that, that happen. It's a very diverse workforce uh, we work with. There are 
um, over 650 different job titles in dozens of different disciplines. Uh, some of the, the, uh, the people who work at Cottage are um, uh, at the bedside. They're, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're therapists, and their passion was to have that direct relationship with a patient and apply themselves to, so that they could really uh, take care of patients at the very highest uh, possible level. Uh, some, a lot of the people do work um, like, like I do, in admitting or in information technology or in administration, where really we're there ultimately to make sure that the people at the bedside have the tools and resources they need to take care of any of us when we come into the hospital. So the, 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 the jobs are very different, and, and what everyone has in common in healthcare, in these healthcare fields, is this, um, I think, sense of commitment to that passion and really wanting to, to work collaboratively across disciplines to make sure that we're ready when the community needs us. When a patient comes into the ER and needs us, we're ready to go. They've, they've gotten the education, they've gotten the technical skills, but I think what you're probably learning in your internships also is that it's not just the technical skills that are really important to your success and ability to do your jobs so, so well. It's this sense of collaboration and teamwork and, and really kind of the joy of being a part of something that's bigger than yourself that can come from, from being in an organization like Cottage or in, in so many of the other uh, opportunities and fields that you're hearing about uh, this morning. Um, last week, I had the chance to attend a nursing new graduation reception. So these are individuals who've gone to nursing school, most of them locally. These are graduates from the nursing program at Santa Barbara City College, at Cal State Channel Islands. There was one graduate from UC Irvine. Um, but these were all uh, uh, young women and men who indeed had found their passion. And what, what I was struck by, uh, each of them told a little story about themselves and their, their own personal journey. And um, the, 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 what, what was really impressive is that these, uh, these uh, I'd say, you know, young adults, uh, uh, most of them, there were some mid-career individuals who had gone into nursing later in life, but most of them were, were uh, high school and then into the nursing uh, program. Um, they, they knew who they were, and they knew what they were here to do, and they had that kind of quiet confidence that they had found the thing that they could apply their talents and really make, make a difference. And uh, that sense of confidence and achievement was just so impressive to me. Um, the other thing that, was, that they had in common is that every single one of them had a, either a personal experience with their family or, or in every case had a mentor. It might have been a mentor, it might have been a mother or a father or an uncle or aunt or an older brother or sister, and oftentimes it was somebody outside their family they had met and really exposed them to, uh, to nursing in this case. Um, and uh, uh, they, they, through those introductions, they were able to learn that, that this is what they were really meant to do. Um, Chelsea asked all of us to share just a little bit about our own career path, and um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that briefly this morning. Um, and I, I know what you're all thinking. For all of you who are who are uh, my generation, you know, I'll say I'll say over 50, um, you you know the story because for those of us who grew up in the 50s and 60s of the last century. Uh, you know, every eight-year-old boy wanted to be an astronaut or a major league baseball player or a hospital administrator, right? <laughs> I, think, I think it's pretty common knowledge, and so I don't think that's changed. And so for all of you who are under 20 this morning, uh, show of hands, how many of you, your dream is to be a hospital administrator? Raise your hands. And um, the lights are a little bright here. I can't see all the hands that are going up, and so uh, I, I, I'm sure we can uh, help you find your I did see two hands, so I'll talk to you after the meeting this morning. Um, uh, no, that's not the story. The story is that I had no idea what I was going to do, and, and uh, um, uh, I was an only child, grew up in a small family, didn't have a lot of uh, opportunities to meet people in different disciplines growing up, but my college roommate's father was a hospital administrator, and he, was the, he ran the hospital in Santa Paula, and uh, we would sometimes go to Santa Paula to visit his family. And uh, when we got there, he couldn't wait to take his son and me over to show us the new ICU or take us to the rotary meeting. And it, I don't think it would have mattered what he did. I was so impressed with his, his passion and enthusiasm and um, his joy in the work that he did that it was a little infectious. And, uh, and so um, I, I wanted to learn more about it and got to know him a lot better and learned more about it. 
and uh, discovered that that was something that I really wanted to do also. So um, nobody knows about, uh, the, the point is not really about hospital administration. The point is that there are fields that you can grow up and not know anything about unless you take advantage of these opportunities that are presented here in Santa Barbara to meet people in different walks of life. And those, those introductions, I think, are so important. And, and as you're seeing this morning and learned in your internship, there are lots of people in town who are very anxious to, to, uh, to pay it forward. And those of us who had these opportunities with mentors all along the way really want to uh, provide that, that uh, introduction to, to those of you who are co considering different career paths. I think if you grow up in Santa Barbara, you may not um, uh, uh, know uh, what Steve Ainsley said this morning, that this, this uh, perhaps not unique, but pretty unusual to have the degree of, of uh, partnerships that we enjoy from uh, workplace to, to school. We've got great public schools, and in healthcare, uh, which I'm more familiar with, we have the uh, Health Careers Academy at San Marcos High School great addition to our community. Uh, we've got um, uh, the, the nursing program and other clinical programs at Santa Barbara City College that we partner with uh, at Cottage. We've got Cal State Channel Islands and their nursing program now having a branch here in Santa Barbara. And, um, and we've got the, the, the higher education partnerships, UCSB, a lot of students do volunteer uh, uh, work at Cottage. Westmont and all the other schools that, that you all know about. Uh, it, it's a small enough community that we can have these great connections and create opportunities for you. And the health providers are very committed to this, uh, not, not just Cottage. We've got Sansom, the American Indian Health uh, Clinic, Pueblo Radiology, dental offices, and a great partner uh, with many interns this year uh, is the, the med centers here in town. So. Uh, with that, it's again my honor to uh, congratulate all of you this morning and a special uh, congratulations to those of you who are pursuing a career in healthcare and on to the awardees. Thank you. Deborah Bradbury, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Kinesiology. Ivan Govea, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Sports Medicine. Belmi Manzanares. Santa Barbara High School, Med Center, Inc. Michelle Matamoros, Santa Barbara High School, Med Center, Inc. Stevie O'Connor, San Marcos High School, ROP Allied Health Careers 1. Cynthia Richmond, Santa Barbara High School, Med Center, Inc. Angela Sanchez, Santa Barbara High School, Med Center, Inc. Alondra Sanchez, San Marcos High School, Med Center, Inc. Sonia Santos, Carpinteria High School, ROP Sports Medicine. Maria Tate, San Marcos High School, ROP Sports Medicine, ROP Advanced Health Careers. My name is Kiana Silva and I'm a senior at San Marcos High School. I took uh, my first auto class because I knew I was going to be getting my license soon and I wanted to be a responsible car owner. As I learned more about automotive technology, it became more of an interest, something that I wanted to explore more. And so I took a class at City College, I was able to learn more about it. And then uh, the following year I took the Auto ROP class. My name is Russell Granger, I'm the Automotive Technologies Instructor at San Marcos High School. What I saw in Kiana when she first enrolled in my class was a very hardworking, dedicated, uh, focused student who was going to do the best she could at, at whatever task. Uh, what she found after taking my advanced automotive technologies course uh, was that she found a passion for the material and the work and she be decided she wanted to become uh, auto tech. I first heard about the internship program through my auto teacher, Russell Granger. I recommended her because she's hardworking, dedicated, and I thought she would uh, benefit greatly uh, from the program, and she has. My internship was at Ayers Automotive Repairs. My name's Nikki Ayers, and I own Ayers Automotive Repairs in downtown Santa Barbara. The Partners in Education internship program is so cool because it brings us students that are truly interested in being in our field. I started off working with the parts manager, kind of helping him organize stuff, um, but what I really wanted to do was uh, more hands-on working with tools and with the cars, and Nikki was able to make that happen. I ended up working side-by-side -side, uh, with one of the technicians, my mentor, 
and I helped him with all the, the work that he was doing every day. Just simple things from taking tires off of the cars to taking apart the entire front end to do um, a valve job replacement or something, something like that and then putting it back together in a matter of like four hours, which was incredible. It was so much fun. Currently, Kiana is the only uh, female in my uh, Advanced Automotive Technologies class, uh, which makes her achievement even more impressive. She has to deal with a very gender-biased environment. Being the only girl in my automotive class was very intimidating at first. You know, I kind of got the feeling at first there were some guys that were like, oh, she's a girl, what, what is she doing here? Being a woman in the industry and having a young woman in the industry is, is unique in itself. Kiana's the only female working with 13 men in our shop. Kiana does face a lot of challenges, but she's that special young lady who seems to rise to that challenge. And Kiana has no trouble at all dealing with that environment. And uh, I say that jokingly, the, uh, the young men in my class are very respectful and uh, uh, they do maintain decorum, but it is still male dominated. Oh, Kiana's got a lot of spunk. <laughs> Um, I think one of her first tasks that she got to work actually with Dan, they did a timing chain job on, a, on an A8 Audi where they had to remove the whole front part of an Audi and she got to be part of that whole process. Automotive technology was a subject that I was interested in but I didn't know if it was something that I for sure wanted to do and through the internship program. Um, I was able to gain a bunch of experience and knowledge on this and I was able to determine whether or not it was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Um, every day after work, after working with my mentor, I would think about all of the cool things that I got to do and then I'd walk home with this huge grin on my face and for a while I couldn't figure out why and then I realized it's because I loved doing this. It was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was my passion. And through this internship program, I've been able to discover my path, the path that I want to pursue after high school. Hello, my name is Doug Ford. I'm the president of DD Ford Construction. Um, I've just got a comment. That was a great video seeing the passion and the spark that was lit up with this young woman. Um, anyways, that's what we get to do in our industry all every day. It's great. Um, my career path was not a straight line. It took many turns. It seems like lots of the students here are on a very focused path and they have a plan. That's very good. Work your plan, keep your plan. For others, your path may not be as straight. Your path may include many turns until you find your passion and you find your plan. That's okay, just keep at it. As partners volunteers, my colleagues and I like knowing that we've been able to provide a little bit of assistance with all of you finding your path and making your plan. Also know this, students, everyone in this room, everyone in this room is pulling for you. So use these people. Some of you might remember the Trade Art Foundation at some of your career days. We are the ones letting you hammer nails, solder pipes, cut glass, plaster walls. You walked away from us either really excited about the next opportunity you had a chance to pick up a tool, or you left never wanting to get next to one ever again. <laughs> either way, we accomplished our mission. We wanted you to try something different. We wanted you to explore. We wanted you to try something you might never have tried before. I've always loved building things. First, I built furniture and cabinets. Then I built the kitchen remodel that the cabinets went into. Then I built the house that the kitchen was part of. Yes, I always loved building things. Years ago, a man suggested I build something more, something bigger. 
Tom Thompson shared with me the plan for building a, a business. He shared with me the tools to build a successful business. Today, I get to share with my, my passion for building with so many others because Tom cho chose to share his passion with me and because Tom chose to mentor me. Knowing how life-changing a career mentor can be, DD Ford Construction is an avid supporter of the Partners in Education internship program. We have hosted three partners interns. Each has been a joy and an inspiration to our company. Jesus Tarazas currently is employed part-time at DD Ford and is receiving, has received his award for the second year in a row. It fills me with pride to know that helping Jesus achieve his end goal and in the meantime, he's contributing to my business in countless ways. Jesus, I only hope you wait until I retire to take over the company. <laughs> also, as a member of the partner's board, I'd like to thank all the other internship hosts in the room. Those of you who have committed to shaping the future workforce by providing both guidance on the job and a portion of their wages. The experiences you've provided for your intern, including the experience of being paid for a job well done, isn't measurable in a statistic. It is the difference between a young person saying, yes, I can, and no, I don't think so. And to the volunteers out there, thank you for sharing with these young people what drew you into your career, what lit you up, and the joys of a job well done. Students, today you're here because something grabbed you. Something lit you up. It might have been a car's engine. It might have been a computer program. It might have been a 3D model. A great film, a piece of art. Building a wall and construction technology. Whatever it is, continue to hone your skills. Follow that spark. It will set you apart from the rest of the pack. The Specialized Technology and Design Award category represents a career path that required specialized, focused skill sets and intensive technical training. Students, you certainly didn't choose the easiest path, not at all. But in my opinion, you chose the one that is absolutely the most fun. Congratulations. And now, the awards in Specialized Technology and Design. In Architecture, Martin Castillo, Dos Pueblos High School, RRM Design. In Automotive Technologies, Luke Anderson, San Marcos High School, Bowman's Auto Repair. Kiana Silva, San Marcos High School, ROP Auto 101, Ayers Automotive. In Engineering and Design, Raven Borgi, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP First Robotics. Sam Chu, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Electronics Technology. Jorge Cruz, Carpinteria High School, Agriculture Engineering. John Dang, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Computer Technology. Philip Downey, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP First Robotics. Anton Obedkov, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP Networking Technology. <laughs> Jesse Andrews Freeland, Goleta Valley Junior High, Woodshop. <laughs> Luis Mendez, Santa Barbara Junior High, Woodshop. <laughs> Angel Ruiz, Dos Pueblos High School, Construction Technology One. <laughs> Harrison Gilman, Santa Barbara High School, Film Production, Mad Academy. Ankush Kimani, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP TV Video Production, DP News. 
Carlos Garcia Kong, Santa Barbara High School, Photography, Mad Academy. Alexander Gross, Santa Barbara High School, Social, Social Media, Web Design, Mad Academy. Katherine Henderson, Carpinteria High School, ROP, Computer Graphics. Avery Jones, Santa Barbara High School, Mad Studio, Mad Academy. Reed Lasea, San Marcos High School, TV Santa Barbara. Marina Morales, Santa Barbara High School, Digital Drawing, Mad Academy. Skylar Ulip, Santa Barbara High School, Photojournalism, Mad Academy. Brett Williams, Dos Pueblos High School, ROP, TV, Video Production. Good morning, nice to see you all. My name is Lori Gaskin and I have the pleasure of serving as president of Santa Barbara City College. But this morning, I share a great deal of humbleness and pleasure in being the upcoming president of this most um, august body, the Partners in Education. As you can see, it is a collective of individuals, organizations, and entities who care passionately about our future. And folks, this is our future, which what we're seeing and celebrating this morning couldn't be more special. So I have the absolute honor of sharing with you the awardees for the education and nonprofit or service sector. And, you know, after witnessing such impressive examples of students' passion and work this morning, it's really exciting for me to imagine that many of these award recipients will someday be my students at City College, maybe next year, perhaps in the future, and they couldn't choose a better institution. I might be a little biased, but uh, recently we were named the number one community college in the nation. And thank you, thank you. And that wasn't a consequence of a popularity contest. It was done on the basis of the caliber and quality of our academic programs and our professors and our staff who care just as passionately as these wonderful individuals in this room about your future students. And um, when the, this body who selected us, the Aspen Institute, commented about what caused us to stand out amongst the 1,200 other community colleges in the nation, they spoke about a pervasive commitment to student goal attainment and student success being there and partner with you as you strive to achieve these most noble goals in your dreams. So in that regard, I take tremendous pride in being able to introduce this particular category. I wanted to share as well, just very briefly, a little snippet of my pathway, because my pathway in some way was um, uh, quite focused and yet convoluted. And it's an oxymoron to be able to put those two things together. But I went into UCLA for me very, very young. I had just turned 17 a month before I entered UCLA, and I truly was lost, absolute lost soul, and um, changed my major five times, which at that time was really, really difficult to do. You almost had to plead with the dean, may I please change my major? And Ron, believe it or not, one of those majors was uh, health administration. I didn't know where my head was, but... Um, <laughs> In my junior year, I had put off taking um, a lab class. And you know, you just kind of take a class that, that meets your schedule, fills your niche. And it was an earth science class. And I fell in love, not with the professor and not with any of the students. I fell in love with studying about rocks and about fossils and about soil, and most importantly, about streams. And that just changed my being. And so as Doug said in, in, in his own eloquent way, follow your heart and follow your passion and seize those opportunities that present themselves, even though they may not be lockstep and sequential. So I had to go an extra year, take a bunch of sciences, but I'm really, really proud to say, first and foremost, I am an earth scientist. And I'm an earth scientist educator. And that's what brings me great joy. So the second thing that happened, and I sense I'm seeing it in this room, is that someone saw in me 
something I never dreamed I had. And so I was marching along, I found her science, and I got into the master's program and applied for a PhD, and I was gonna be a researcher and, and do all this you know, in the lab sorts of things and out in the field sorts of research. But my advisor, my graduate advisor, started putting me into the classroom at UCLA. Now the classroom is several hundred students large, and here I was, a graduate student, he'd say, you know, today I want you to lecture on this, or I want you to present that. And I didn't know why he was doing that until I reflected and had a moment to, to think, well, maybe in some way, shape, or form, he does see something in me that I didn't have the capacity to see in myself. And that is the passion and ability to teach and to share my joy with all those who care to listen about rocks and geology and streams and so on. And that began a 34 career, a year career in uh, education. And I share that with you because I do want you to think about these experiences that you have gone through and to seize opportunities that may not perhaps be what you had in mind, but may present such gifts and open such doors that you never really thought about going through. So at, now looping back around to City College, at City College we really worked diligently to connect with all of you and your career and college aspirations long before you ever think about coming to us. And some of you may know about our exemplary program called Get Focused, Stay Focused, which is in every one of the high schools from Carpinteria through Santa Barbara. This initiative begins in the ninth grade, and it's really an effort designed to provide every student with the necessary information that they need in order to think about uh, their, their college and their career goals. And you might think, well, it's kind of weird to ask a ninth grader to begin thinking about their career pathway, but it's never too early to explore. And exploration is the zest of life. It's what, it's what uh, brings forth opportunity, and it's what brings forth uh, meaningful, fulfilling experiences. So partners in education connects with us to provide this opportunity in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade for students to reflect upon their career pathways, think about what they might have a passion for, explore that in a research capacity, explore that out in the community through these internships and mentorship situations. So this is why I'm eternally grateful to Partners in Education. I now uh, am delighted to be able to uh, recognize those students who have served us in the capacity of education and nonprofit sector. These uh, individuals truly give of the heart. It's a, a rewarding, rewarding pathway, servicing the, the, and being stewards of the public's trust and the community's trust. And so it is my uh, absolute pleasure to welcome onto stage our students who we will be honoring in education and nonprofit work. Thank you. Linda Ariano, Santa Barbara High School, first five, Santa Barbara County. Alondra Brofel, Santa Barbara High School, AOK -okay after school program. Jennifer Castro, Santa Barbara High School, AOK -okay after school program. Mushabar Ejimofor, Santa Barbara High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Ariana Gill, Santa Barbara High School, Path Point. Lucas Graybill, Dos Pueblos High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Aliyah Houston, Dos Pueblos High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Valerie Martinez, Carpinteria High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Alondra Mendoza, Santa Barbara High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Antonia Malo, Dos Pueblos High School, AOK -okay After School Program. Alyssa Mueller, San Marcos High School, Introduction to Education, AOK -okay After School Program. 
Amber Ramirez, Dos Pueblos High School, Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation. Anna Sanchez, San Marcos High School, AOK After School Program. Maria Vallecillo, Santa Barbara High School, AOK After School Program. Thank you everyone for being here today. That concludes our program. Congratulations to all the students and their families. Have a great day.